In this video, we'll look at how to add content and style that content within Neatline's editing interface. The content in this video is also explained in a written tutorial that you can find here or in the description below these videos. If you'd like to follow the text in this video, make sure you've turned on closed captioning. To access Neatline's editing interface, we can click on the title of our exhibit in the Browse Exhibits page. Remember that you may need to share location with your browser uh, in order for the site to pull up the street map. Neatline's editing interface looks much like Neatline's public view with the map at the central uh, center of our browser window and a timeline running along the bottom. We have in addition, however, this interface over here on the left, a column in which we can add and edit and style our content and overall exhibit. Let's first begin by looking at some of the settings that we see in the top of our editing interface. We have three tabs, records, styles, and plugins. Records will take us to a list of our Neatline records once we begin adding them into Neatline's uh, interface. In Styles, we can add custom styles using CSS, and we can set the overall view of our map when our users first open our exhibit. This is an extremely important step because if I have content that appears in another part of the map, or if I have an image layer uh, that is not correctly focused, when my users first open my exhibit, they may have a hard time finding my content within the interface. So I will begin by simply zooming my map into the location that I want to begin at. Once you have the zoom and focus of your map or image, in the left hand, uh, column, look for Use Current Viewport as Default. Cl click this button to add uh, geographic coordinates and zoom level into the settings here. Then click Save to save your exhibit. And now when you next open your exhibit, you will automatically be taken to this map or image view. Next we have Plugins. We have added simile timeline and waypoints to our Neatline exhibit, so we should be able to add some customization to these two uh, widgets within our exhibit. We'll return to this later once we have created some content. Now let's return to records. To add a record, we can click on this blue New Record button and we've been taken in this left-hand column to a new area where we can add information about our Neatline record, connect it to an Omeka item, and add map points and particular styles. Let's take a look at the many options. First, a Neatline record always needs a title. Next, in our Neatline record, we have a section called Body. In this area, we can provide a more detailed narrative uh, that will accompany but be external to our Omeka item. This narrative should connect that specific record uh, with the other records in the exhibit and with the other items that may be uh, added into the exhibit. I will go ahead and save at the bottom and notice that we have a delete button as well accompanying the save button, but again remember as with everything else in Neatline and Omeka, there is no undo. So if you are going to delete content, make sure you have it saved elsewhere in case you need to access it later. Back up at the top now, I have the title for my Neatline record, and then beneath that I have four tabs, text where we can return to and edit uh, the title and body content later, and we will do this. Item, where we can connect this Neatline record to an Omeka item. Map, where we can add points and lines and polygons to the map 
that will bring up our neat line record and style where we can specify uh, where this item appears on the timeline, uh, what the points, polygons, and lines look like on the map, and whether or not it's uh, listed in waypoints. Let's first link it to a specific item in Omeka. In the item tab, we can search all of the Omeka items on the site to find the content that we want to include. We could type in some information or we could select from the list. Uh, as you add items to your site, of course, this list may become very long and you may need to uh, search by item title. Once you have identified an item, select it and click Save. Then we should see our Dublin Core metadata added to our Neatline record. In Neatline, we can only associate one Omeka item with one Neatline record. So if you want to have multiple Omeka items in a Neatline exhibit, you will need to have multiple Neatline records. Next, we can add points, lines, and polygons on the map by clicking the Map tab at the top. In the Map section, we have a number of different kinds of drawing tools. Each of these is listed below with a radio button next to it. Depending on where our radio button is uh, in the menu, we will have a different tool to work with. By default, we will begin with Navigate so that we can set up our view in the way that we want uh, before we begin drawing on the map. I'm going to zoom in a little bit to the area that I'm going to map. Then we can choose to draw a point and now I should have a point attached to my cursor that will follow me around and anytime I click a point will be added to the map. A neat line record can have multiple points, lines, and polygons associated with it. So think about how you could use this feature uh, to note multiple locations uh, that may be connected with an item or a record. If I want to remove uh, a point, I can navigate down to Delete Shape in my drawing tools and click on a point to remove it. Or I can click Clear All Geometry to remove all of the points, lines, and polygons that may have been added to this record. I can also draw lines. And this time when I click, I will set the end point for a line. And I will click again to close that segment. And I can continue clicking one at a time to add in multiple line segments. And then to end this drawing, I would need to double click. And now I should have a line. Again, I can delete my shape by deleting, clicking Delete Shape. Now deleting lines can be difficult. Oh, there it goes. Or I could have clicked Clear All Geometry. I can also draw a polygon in the same way that I was using the line tool, except that when I draw my polygon, it's going to want to create a closed shape. And to end that shape, I would double click to set that last corner. Now I can modify my shape by clicking Modify Shape. And when I do that and click on the polygon, I get little points on the corners of my shape as well as at the midpoint of my shape that enable me to slightly adjust my shape. And each time I edit a midpoint, I get a new button for a midpoint so I can continue making this shape as uh, customized as I want it to be. I could also create what's called a regular polygon and this can be an easy tool to use if say I wanted to draw just a regular triangle 
by clicking and dragging and then releasing, I can create a triangle. I can change the number of sides that are listed below a regular polygon. Let's say I want to create an octagon. I could change that to 8. And now when I click and drag, I can create an octagon. I can move these shapes around by using drag shape. And clicking on this shape where the point appears on it, I can move it around. I could click on this shape and again click on its little point and move it around. I can also resize my shapes by clicking on one of them and dragging on the corner with the point attached. And I can rotate my shapes, again, selecting the shape that I want to rotate, clicking on the point that appears associated to it, and dragging. When I release, the shape will be rotated. At the bottom of my editing interface, there's a section called Spatial Data, and then a text box labeled Geometry Well-Known Text. This is the format that Neatline uses to document all of the shapes that are added to a Neatline record. This may be important later if you wish to uh, create and add geometry to multiple uh, records, you could copy and paste this information from one record into another. However, you do not want to edit this unless you are an expert in the well-known text syntax. It is also possible to add what are called SVG or vector graphics into Neatline by adding uh, the markup from an SVG file created in Adobe Illustrator. If you wish to do that, please contact your instructor or site administrator. Now I'm going to remove some of my polygons and again I will click Save before continuing. Now the final tab, Style, I can use to add uh, a number of uh, other settings to my specific record. First at the top I have Widgets. Here in Widgets I can tell Neatline whether or not to add this record to Waypoints and to Timeline. This is an important step because even though we have added the Timeline and Waypoints into the exhibit overall, each individual record can be shown or hidden on these, in these widget sections depending on whether or not they are listed in this text box. So if I want timeline, if I want this record to appear on the timeline, I must select Simile Timeline. And if I want it to appear on waypoints, I must also select waypoints. These of course are optional, so there could be a reason why I might not want to have them appear on the timeline or on waypoints. This is up to you. Under Presenter, we can choose Static Bubble or None. By default, we want to keep this as Static Bubble as this will enable us to uh, click on uh, a Neatline record and have our record bubble appear with that Omeka item information attached if we've attached an Omeka item. Underneath colors, we can control the color of not only the polygon that we have added, but also uh, the point or time span that appears on the timeline. So these colors will always be related between uh, the timeline and the map. Let's say I want to choose um, maybe a darker blue since we are at Duke. Something along the lines of a Duke blue here. And I could copy and paste this little code, which is a hexadecimal code for this specific color, and use this in other uh, Neatline records by pasting it into the same box in another record. This can be a useful uh, way to add consistency across multiple records. Then if I want my fill color selected, um, notice that if I hover right now over my um, Neatline record, the color changes. This is the difference between fill color and fill color selected. The fill color is the darker blue, 
and the fill color selected is the lighter blue, and this corresponds to our settings over here on the left. You could have uh, these two colors be the same if you didn't want the color to change, but the color change can actually be useful uh, in letting your users know that they have selected a point or polygon on the map. You can choose whether or not to have uh, fill color and fill color selected be set to the same color. Again, remember we could copy our hexadecimal color code and paste it. Uh, however, it can be helpful to have two different colors because that will let your users know when they have actually selected one of your records. So let's say we'll actually do the fill color in a lighter, and then when we select it, it gets darker. We can also change the stroke color and stroke selected. This is the same con concept as the fill color and fill color selected. So maybe I will have the same color instead of black outlining. And then we have a section called opacities, and here we can control the opacity of our geometry on our map or base image layer. The fill opacity is uh, set between 0 being transparent and 1 being entirely opaque. This is controlled to the tenth decimal place, so by default we are at 0.3, but we could make this 0.6. to make this slightly more opaque, uh, and then maybe uh, one to make it entirely opaque, so that when we hover over our item or select it, it turns entirely opaque. This may or may not be useful for your project. And as we'll see, it's actually uh, incredibly important for adding georectified map layers into Neatline. For now, I'm going to leave this at 0.5 and 0.5 so that only the color changes. And I could do the same thing with my stroke opacity. Now, if I set stroke opacity to zero, I will have no stroke. And this may be something that you actually want. Or you may want to keep your stroke opacity fully opaque to help uh, delineate the space that your polygon is covering. Next we have dimensions. This applies uh, both to stroke and to point. So let's go back to the map and we'll just add a point so that we can look at what happens uh, when we have a point on the map. So I will click to add a point and notice now that styling has also been applied to my point. All of the styles that are set in this tab for this particular record will be applied to all of the geometry in this record. So if you want to have a point that's a different color, uh, you'll need to have it in a different Neatline record. So now in dimensions, we can change stroke width. And stroke width is automatically set to 2, but it can go up to a thickness of 10, and this is 10 pixels. So if I make it 10, that will make it very thick. 5 is less thick, and then 0, again, similar to the opacity settings for the stroke. I'll leave it at 5 so that we can see it now. And then point radius, this simply changes the size of a point. And point radius um, can go uh, from 0 up. So I could make this as large as 100, and that's 100 pixels. We can make it even larger or we could make it very small. Now let's go back and remove our point. Go back to style. And at this point we haven't saved, so I'm going to go to the bottom and click save before we continue.
And now when I've clicked Save, notice that Waypoints has appeared and our record is now available in Waypoints. So there are a few more things that we can do to style this record. One of them is to add a start date. So let's say we want to add the date, uh, a date for the beginning of Trinity College in Durham. And then for each individual Neatline record, I can also set a default focus and zoom so that I can control uh, how my users move through the exhibit. And this can be helpful for directing their attention. So let's say this is how I want my map to appear when they click on Trinity College. So I will click again, use current viewport as default, and save. Now, I have added a date for my record, and I have made sure that it's been added to Simile Timeline, but we don't see it here right now because by default the timeline is set to 2017. So if I click the X button up here at the top, and return to the front page for the editing interface, I have my record here now listed below and as I add new records uh, this list will grow. I can go up now to plugins, simile timeline, and here I can set a default date for my exhibit, so the date when my exhibit will start. This could be the beginning uh, of the chronology of your exhibit, it could be the middle, or it could be the end. It's entirely up to you. I'm going to set this at uh, 1892 at the beginning for now and save. And when I do that, we now have this uh, neat line record appear in our timeline. In these settings, I could also change the interval unit from year to decade or century or millennium. I could also go down to the second if I wanted to. And I can also make the intervals between these uh, markers larger or smaller by changing the interval pixels. By default, it's set to 100, but we can make this 200 to make those intervals wider. Or we could make them smaller. Now I'll leave this at the default. And then track height and tape height control uh, how much space each uh, record that's listed on the timeline takes up. And we'll come back to this when we have a few more records added. So now I will return to my record. And remember, I can edit. I could add some text here that talks about um, my item and its larger context within the narrative. And I could also return to uh, edit my style, map, and item in these tabs. There are a number of different ways we can customize our Neatline exhibit. To find out more, continue watching the videos in this playlist.